Cecily Newman wakes up after an operation in 2057, finding it difficult to remember what happened to her. With no healthcare professional present and the facilities being abandoned, she finds herself jumping in and out of a surreal psychedelic trip, being hunted by hostile entities she doesn't recognize. Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to a story which examines the morality of scientific experiments and consciousness transference. I play this game which I will post very soon on my gaming channel, which might be already linked in the description depending on when you're watching this video. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers as always, and there will be also some flashing lights, and with that said, let's dive in. Opening her eyes to an induction board by VU organization, Cecily Newman reads information about her stay at the VU facilities. Being aged only 4 hours, having a height of 5 foot 6 inches, and weighing an astounding 1,437 pounds. Her sex and blood type is unidentified, with a strange category known as husk status, having insufficient data. The board explains that Cecily just had an operation and will be released soon in a few months on July 4th, 1957. Coincidentally, being the Independence Day of United States, a day of freedom and detachment from dependence. Cecily being known as client A4D32 has a name that is of Latin origins which directly translates to blind. A strange coincidence which is foreshadowing what is to come. Not having an identified sex or blood type, it becomes apparent that Cecily is not a human being or at least not anymore. Being told to stay in the room for a VU employee to attend to her, no one comes for a very long time, making Cecily very impatient, leaving her room as a result to investigate the outsides. Just as she gets close to the corridor's corner, the facilities go into an emergency alert with an entity flashing in front of Cecily before disappearing. This causes Cecily to travel into a surreal world with an overshadowing entity looking down and a prostrating stretched out fleshy being staying still as if it has been transformed into a statue. Looking up at the ceiling, a cryptic message is written in symbolic code which translates to I want to know what happened to everybody. Approaching the prostrating statue, the environment transforms into an emergency lockdown type of thing with screens reading out that the facility is unstable. That's when Cecily jumps out of this world back to the facilities, which seem to be abandoned with no one present and the multiple loose wires and faulty lights. Cecily closing her eyes notices that she can still see, but only points and items of interest in a strange manner. Using this ability, she can overcome many obstacles that she will face later on. Getting out of the abandoned halls, she arrives at the stairwell leading to different rooms. Interacting with a green mechanical eyeball, Cecily sees a prediction of what is to come or what needs to happen. An eyeball that seemingly keeps memories or ideas. Going down and investigating the facilities, Cecily comes across a writing on the wall describing that a hospital by the name of Gold Leaf has been operating as part of the V organization for 138 years, which could indicate how many of their patients were used as test subjects, one like Cecily. Going deeper down the sinister facilities of VU, a poster is seen warning the employees of how dangerous husks can be. Deformed human identities with stretched out limbs. The poster further instructs the employees to close their eyes when they encounter a husk and head for the nearest exit, as that's the only way they can evade these hostile entities. Entities that are specifically attracted by people's eyes. Exploring the facilities more, Cecily comes across a husk who follows her in a pitch black room, which she narrowly escapes by closing her eyes, feeling the terror of a near-death experience, finding it difficult to catch her breath. Going to an office room, Cecily comes across a strange set of mechanical eyes and a mouth, as if belonging in a dentist office, which soon is revealed to share close resemblance to the eyes and mouth of the husks, displaying that these eyes and mouths are inserted in their faces for some mysterious reason, as they make the husks look more terrifying and unapproachable. 
Evading another husk, Cecily manages to use the elevator and go down to a laboratory room, observing a lifeless patient on a bed with two large green tubes poked deep into his eye sockets. In another room, she finds a lifeless husk placed inside a pot surrounded by red bars, which suggests that husks are in fact products that are manufactured by the VU organization. This is further confirmed as when Cecily interacts with the eye of the lifeless body of the patient, the sheet get pulled down, revealing that he is being transformed into a husk with his limbs being stretched out. A green mechanical eye remains on his eye socket, similar to the one which showed Cecily a vision, with this one causing Cecily to have a full-on trip in a surreal world. Through the eye, she manages to identify the code of a door that she needs to access, as if the eye preserves and visualizes the memories of the employee or the patient that was experimented on being transformed into a husk. Traveling further and reaching an empty presentation room, Cecily comes across an explanation on cognitive transference, a method which transfers the identity or consciousness of a person into a robot, with their bodies transformed into husks, which are used used for further testing and experimentation. I standing for entities yielded essence storage are used to save a person's vitality, which are then placed inside robotic hosts, which allows them to have the consciousness of a human being, but not the fragile and vulnerable flesh and bone. This explains why Cecily Newman does not have an identified sex or blood type, being over 1,000 pounds in weight and only 4 hours old. Cecily in fact has just gone through a cognitive transference experiment, being in a robot host body. Death scenes also confirm this by showing a robotic body lying flat down on the ground, displaying that Cecily had her consciousness or identity transferred into a robot. The green mechanical eyes are in fact the entity's yielded essence storage, or eyes for short, which preserve a person's essence or identity. Hence why Cecily managed to get visions when interacting with them. The eyes that were scattered in the facilities, which were storage units containing a person's memories and identity. The process of identity extraction was also depicted by the motionless body of a patient having two large tubes shoved inside his eye sockets, with one green eye remaining on his skull. His body as a result was being transformed into a husk to be used for further testing. Passing the presentation room, Cecily arrives at a central room with many screens which display what VU stands for, being for vitality and identity extraction for WWV and WWV standing for World War V. The harrowing revelation unravels the mysteries of this organization, that they have been conducting these immoral and horrid experiments for preserving one's vitality through extracting their consciousness and placing them inside robotic entities. They intended to preserve humanity by making them immune to fallout effects of war and the lack of resources, something that they did not anticipate however was that the remainder of the people experimented on, their flesh and bone body, still kept some part of their identities, becoming the vengeful and hostile husks, looking for the rest of their identity and consciousness, chasing after eyes or the green mechanical storage units, hence why when the protagonist dies, a text appears that her eyes were stolen. That is why closing her eyes makes the husks stop from following her, as they do not want to hurt anyone apart from regaining their missing cognitive parts. The grunting and growling sounds they also make just displays how much pain and suffering they are in. The husk, a derogatory term given to these disposed parts of humans, which means dry outer covering, were given this name in order to dehumanize them. In fact, they are as human as their counterparts, the host bodies who were ultimately sent to laboratories to be mutilated and deformed in such horrific manners. Having mechanics set of eyes and mouths to make them visually unapproachable and horrifying so no one would empathize or sympathize with them. As any other evil corporate organization, VU similarly has compassionate slogans in order to appeal to general public and secure fundings, slogans which are all over the central room. As going deeper into the sinister building where many atrocities took place, Cecily encounters the entity that appeared at the very beginning where the emergency alarm was sounded. 
This entity appears to have a dress, being robotic yet not having the green mechanical eyes. This entity, instead of showing any hostility or approaching the protagonist, stretches its arm, offering Cecily to interact with a green eye on her hand. Cecily being terrified closes her eyes in order to evade this entity, but a strange text appears saying that this won't work with her revealing that all the texts and clues left for Cecily when she was closing her eyes were all sent by this entity, someone who has been guiding Cecily since the very beginning. This depicts that this entity has some sort of telepathic communication ability, communicating with Cecily even with her eyes closed, maybe due to the green eyes Cecily has obtained after the experiment. Trusting this dress-wearing entity, Cecily approaches her and interacts with the eye in her hand, which teleports her into a surreal world with psychedelic imagery, all having strong allegories to the story, with eyes being seen everywhere, eyes that act as storage units containing one's memories and consciousness, and the ability to see the hidden secrets of this inhuman organization. Traversing deeper in this fever dream, interpretive and representative structures show how husks and hosts are interlinked, and they are in fact one split into two. Hidden messages reveal that V facilities deformed and mutilated the human bodies into husks in order for everyone to fear them and, as a result, dismiss them as human wings. Nothing more and nothing less, as V did in fact know the grave moral implications of their inhuman experiments. Another hidden message explains that the men in the sky lied to them, which could be a name given to higher-ups in the organization or surgeons who experimented on the test subjects. At the end of the path in the surreal world, the spiritual presence of the entity in the dress is seen, with a large manifestation of her being opposite to a large manifestation of a host, a robotic body, both having one green mechanical eye, with floating blue essences of a human consciousness being present in their hands. Collecting these two essences, a path opens to the ghostly representation of the entity in the dress, which makes Cecily travel to another world. This portrays how despite what the V organization promised, the consciousness and identity of test subjects were never fully contained in the eye. But in fact, the identity of a person or their consciousness was split into two, with part of their identity still remaining in their bodies which were disposed of and dehumanified by practices of mutilation. This new world reveals how many people were experimented on and disposed of, being treated like monsters transformed into monstrous beings by deforming them. The entity in the dress then shows up with an army of husks beneath her, which could reveal that she was possibly a prototype who was transformed into what she is now, being the original husk, being given a horrid and terrifying look. Someone who can possibly telepathically communicate with all the other consciousnesses. Waking up from the surreal trip, Cecily wakes up in a crematorium room with burning incinerators, revealing that many husks were burned to dispose of them. Next to these incinerators lie a few protest placards, all criticizing and protesting view for their cognitive transference experiments, rightfully calling it a murder. Looking at her body, Cecily notices for the very first time that she, in fact, is inside a host body, being a robot who just discovered the atrocities View committed. Deeper in the facilities, noticing a monitor advertising that View as the answer to World War V, preserving humanity, Cecily feels sick to her robotic stomach and continues on. Just as she approaches a door to get out of this nightmare, a husk lunges at her and proceeds to steal her eyes. Just as Cecily is losing consciousness, struggling to fight back, she telepathically communicates with the husk, who tells her to just give up and stop running from it. That's when Cecily decides to sleep, waking up in an original human body, the deformed and mutilated body, which is now being labeled as a husk. It gets a little complicated here, as when the husk closes its eyes, it teleports into another area, passing through obstructed corridors while being chased by the entity in the dress. Managing to evade it, Cecily wakes up back in the facility's room where she started it all, subsequently leaving the facility into a field of trees.
Just as Cicely is about to leave all of this behind, considering it to be a wild trip, the entity in the dress appears, saying that it is not done yet. That's when Cicely finds herself on a suspended platform with a large screen having a countdown, having an option to go to the right, to the entity in the dress, or left to the husks, waiting to be released. Going to the entity in the dress, Cicely goes yet into another surreal world, with buildings collapsing, representing the World War V, while a husk is prostrating, being in the center of it all. Interacting with the husk, Cicely wakes up in the body of the entity in the dress, while the body of the husk lies motionless in front of her, which brings her to the harrowing realization that she in fact was the entity in the dress. With her identity transferred multiple times into different bodies, seemingly being a rebellious individual who didn't want to accept her fate. All these hallucinogenic trips brought her memories back, revealing who she was. Her consciousness, being the mechanical green eye, was transported to her through different husks and hosts. Remembering her doomed fate and that there's no hope outside of these walls, Cecily jumps from the platform, ending her life with an ending unlocked called The Recollection. With Cecily opening her eyes finally, or in other words, remembering who she was and what happened to her. As after all, Cecily has Latin origins, meaning blind, as she was blinded to the fact of what happened to her and everyone else. In an alternate ending, if Cecily decides to go to the left and join the husks who want to escape, she comes across many different forms of them, being in different heights and color tones, revealing more human signs of them, who are all awaiting Cecily to press the button to open the nuclear blast door so they can all exit, achieving their 4th of July or independence. As soon as the door opens, Cecily in horror witnesses buildings and the heavily built area in front of her burnt down to ashes, with the remainder of buildings burning in fire, which doesn't take long before her, alongside many other husks, collapse instantly and die while many other prostrate in fear and the realization of what awaits them. This unlocks the husk ending, with the husks opening their eyes to the true horror that awaits them. In another ending, instead of going through the platform, if Cecily decides to go back through the door she came from, she encounters her host buddy, having a partially synthesized human form, with the other half revealing the insides being robotic. A symbolic image of a mouth shaped like an eye, having Cecily trying to get out of it, reveals how her consciousness is trying to escape the eye or the entity's yielded essence storage, unveiling the horror of being a prisoner inside the host buddy. In this ending, if Cecily waits for the countdown to run out, the facility blows up, killing everyone in it. The surviving husks who manage to evade being burned and the entity in the dress. This unlocks the best ending which is explained to be the result of everyone closing their eyes, or in other words, deciding not to remember the horrors of what they experienced and what awaits them in the outside world. A nuclear war aftermath, being a complete apocalyptic world, filled with toxic fallout, creating an unlivable world. Therefore, maybe ignorance is the best outcome, closing the eyes to these horrors. That's it for the end of this video, folks. I truly hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, R, as always, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.